Hey, I'm Ryan Jacobson with Crucial, and in this video, we're gonna try to build an editing PC. Austin's been complaining, he wants a new PC. Editing PCs are expensive, so we have a plan. We think we can build this thing out of spare parts we can find in the building. First, we're gonna have to go down to the lab and do a little shopping, let's go. All right, so we're done shopping. We've got our parts. Now, obviously, this is not a cheap system. This is definitely not spare parts to most people, right? None of this would be possible if it wasn't for all of the industry partners we work with. They give us parts so we can test them. We reciprocate with memory and storage. It works out in the end. We're gonna kind of go for a black and white theme build. The case will be black, but we think we can make this all work. Let's start from left to right, kind of talk about what we have here. So first off, the base for this build is gonna be an ASUS Prime TRX40 Pro S. This is a white box board, obviously. This is how they send them to us if we're gonna be testing it for certain things. This should be a great Threadripper board for the build we're doing. The top up here, we've got 128 gigs total of Crucial Ballistics Max RGB at 4000 MTS. We'll see if we can get the whole thing to run that fast. I'm not so sure, but we'll give it a shot. Some cable mod cables. We found some white cables downstairs, which should go well with our EVGA 1000 G2 power supply. I'm not so sure that's gonna be big enough. We're gonna find out there as well. We've got six terabytes total of P5 NVMe storage. We've got some thermal take fittings and PETG tube that we can bend up on this build. So obviously this is gonna be a water-cooled build if you haven't guessed. Some splitters from Cooler Master as well as some ARGB fans from Cooler Master. So, we're gonna try to cram a bunch of radiator in this as much as we can in this case, and then uh, definitely put some RGB on it as well. Let's move over to this side. So for our case, we're gonna use an NZXT H710i. I know we can get these radiators in here. I've done it before, so it shouldn't be an issue there. For EK, we've got an EK X-Res 140. We've got two EK SE 360 Slims, um, and we've got some water blocks for a 30 series graphics card. Why is that? Even though we had water blocked 2080s downstairs, Austin wanted a 3090. This is the first time I've actually ever held one of these things. I'll bet this was expensive because I know you got it from where, Austin? A guy named Dan on yep. Amazon. Okay. So that really kind of rounds out the majority of our build. There is one thing you'll notice that's missing and that's a processor. We have one. But it's in here. We don't know what processor it is, we just know it's a Threadripper. Also, the machine's been sitting for about a year and three months and the cooling block is gross. So we're gonna have to clean it out. But let's get to it and see how this thing goes. And we're done. It took us a couple weeks. I did some of the build at home, some of it here, but uh, let's get into it. Let's do a build breakdown and, and see what we did here on this guy. So first off, you've got a TRX 40 prime board as a base. This worked out great for us. Uh, we did have it on hand, so this is one of those gimmies. Next up, we've got 128 gigs of Crucial Ballistics RGB RAM. You'll notice that it's white. This is actually different than what we started with. I had this sitting around out of an X299 system. I threw it in to see what it looked like. Austin loved it. Honestly, I like it too. The white actually adds a little bit more color to it. It kind of sticks with the theme. And where we're at 3600 here, it keeps everything at a one-to-one -one ratio. So hey, 
I think it's a keeper. We're gonna, we're gonna stick with it. And we are running dual Crucial P5s in here. Uh, right now we've got four terabytes. We'll probably add another one in there. There's a, a riser card we can add, add into it. And then of course the uh, 3960X that we ended up getting out of the other machine. We didn't know what was in that machine. Uh, I think we lucked out 24 core CPU, just, just chilling in a machine downstairs. So we got it cleaned up and honestly, it turned out really nice. One of the other things we did here is actually painted the, uh, the, the main bar here, the strap that runs on these cases. This was black. Um, we sandblasted it, hit it with some white, just some generic uh, matte white paint, tied everything together, and honestly, I, I love it. I think it turned out really nice. For the GPU, we did end up using Austin's really expensive 3090 RTX. We covered it with some nice water blocks. Um, hopefully keep this guy nice and cool. I did have to do a little bit of custom work on this. This case does support a vertical GPU, which is awesome. There's not a lot of support underneath it though. Actually, there's none. So we ended up making some custom brackets here at the bottom. It's just some tubing. Comes up to the riser card and really supports that weight. For the cooling side, we ended up with two 360 radiators, um, plenty of tubing, and then of course the EK blocks all over and the EK pump. Uh, it fits really good in this case. You can actually get larger fans in here. I think the 360 radiators are about it though, if, if you're gonna stack them. For the power supply unit, you probably remember we had a thousand watt EVGA unit in here. We're not sure if it's gonna support it in load. We're gonna find out though. Let's throw some workload at this thing. All right, everyone. So to see what this system can really do, we've pulled up Adobe Premiere Pro and added some red 8K raw footage to the timeline. We aren't using proxies and the program monitor is at full resolution. As you can see, we're also running the task manager, MSI Afterburner, and the screen recording software in addition to Premiere. So there's already multiple programs running at once. Looks like we're playing back the footage just fine with no drop frames. Let's go ahead and check how it does when we scrub through the timeline. Scrubbing through the timeline is also really smooth. No jumps or jerky footage when sliding back and forth. The CPU is still only working at about 30%, so let's add to the workload to see if we can get it to sweat. Let's export the whole timeline with the highest export setting and media encoder while we continue to play back the footage in Premiere. It looks like the CPU is working a little bit harder, but Premiere still isn't dropping any frames, even with media encoder exporting at the same time. As a video editor, it's easy to see the benefits of being able to export a draft while continuing to work simultaneously. It can save a lot of time, and in editing, time is definitely money. The GPU is working a little bit harder to help with the export, but temperatures are staying fairly cool. Now let's go ahead and add After Effects into the mix and see what happens. So now we have After Effects playing a clip while Media Encoder exports a video and Premiere Pro plays through the timeline all simultaneously, and still no drop frames in Premiere. I'm actually quite impressed, and I honestly didn't think it would be able to do all three so efficiently. All right, at this point, we've stepped into a fairly unrealistic workflow. You normally wouldn't have Premiere, After Effects, and Media Encoder running processes at the same time, possibly all open, but not all running simultaneously. We're really just seeing how far we can push this system, and so far, it's taken everything we can throw at it. Just for fun, let's add a YouTube video into the mix. Definitely seeing a jump in the GPU and temps are rising a bit. For a nice little cherry on top, let's get crazy and add a warp stabilizer to every clip on the timeline and see what happens. And there we go, CPU maxed out, temps are rising quickly, we're using around 90 gigs of RAM. Looks like the CPU is getting too hot, even with the water blocks, we'll have to shut it down. But it is still incredible how hard we were able to push it and how much we were able to do before it got too hot. Well, I guess Ryan does know what he's doing and Dan, from Amazon actually delivered on his promise. So we're super excited to see what this thing's going to do for our team over the next few months. All right, we're super happy with this build. It turned out great. It's crunching numbers just fine. We're gonna hand it off to our video editing team and let them do their work on it. If you like what you're seeing here, subscribe, hit the bell, all that fun stuff. Also, leave a comment below. Let us know what else you wanna see. If there's anything you want us to build, anything you want to learn about, we'd love to do this and we definitely want to produce more for you. Thank you and until next time.